There's one. Good. Pretty one. Twenty one. All right, I'm just rebating my lines now and gonna be going day after tomorrow. So, just wanna get a jump on it, but see what happens. Hopefully I can catch a whole bunch. That would be pretty sweet. I'd like to catch two, three baskets, be nice. That would make me happy. So we'll see. All right, it's very early. I am getting the trot lines and everything on the boat, getting it loaded up and I'm gonna go ahead and head on out there and see if I can catch a couple. That would be freaking awesome. You know, I'd like to get two good ones today. That's kind of my goal. All right, I've got all my lines in the water. It is a little bit after 5.30. I've had them in the water for probably half an hour or so. So, I'm gonna go ahead and um, give it a couple more minutes and go ahead and run this first one. And I'll go ahead and film that because it's really dark this time. Early morning, sounds of the bay. Volume 2, episode 14. All right, mates. On this episode of Early Morning Sounds of the Bay, we're going to experience that bird, whatever the heck it's doing. It likes hollering at me. You know what? That's probably the kids, 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 kids of the first bird that started yelling at me from right there on that perch. I don't particularly know the ins and outs of osprey life cycles, but that there's one of them educated guesses I just made. All right, let's see if we can't get some of these early crabs. Hopefully there's still something in here. There's one, good. Pretty one. One freaking crab. It is early. He's a good one. Wow, one freaking crab on that long line. And that's my best line, usually. So, yeah, that's not good at all. I mean, it is still really freaking early, but I don't know. I'm going to keep running them and I'll go ahead and film this next one. A lot of times this next one's a little bit better early, but we'll see. Not good. I really don't feel like moving all my gear. All right, sounds of the bay. Early morning edition. Trot lining. Episode four, season six. Hopefully this one does better. I really hope so. Have pretty serious downpours. Every time there's a serious downpour, whatever you were doing that was working, do the opposite. <laughs> Usually don't expect too much out of this first round this early, but this is not good. Take a look at my bait.
Hey, it looks fine. It looks good. All right, try the next two. All right, ran all my line and two freaking crabs. They are good crabs, but it's not good at all. Like, I'm gonna have to. I don't know. I mean, the tide's all the way out. Low tide was two hours ago. So it probably hadn't started rolling in yet. It's gonna kinda meander onto the beginning of my lines and gonna take it slow going back and hope time and hopefully that tide starts moving. And if not, I'm gonna have to go ahead and pick everything up and try somewhere else time i ran that i caught zero freaking crabs this time it was 10 so i mean i was very concerned like i was sure that i was gonna have to move or something was wrong or i don't know but i guess you know the sun started hitting that water and i, I mean the freaking tide i'm looking at my buoys and i'm not seeing the tide moving around my buoys at all you know maybe the wind should be pushing the tide in i should have a nice strong tide today but you know who knows it maybe it picked up I don't know. Something changed. <laughs> I don't know if it was the sun hitting the water or a tide started moving right or what. But so I'll go ahead and film that run. That line should catch like 14 next time. So hopefully it does, and I'll film it. A couple ducks tagging along with me here. <clears throat> Sunrise over there. <clears throat> couple crabs on the boat and what I did is I went ahead and I added um, 15 baits to that line that I just uh, just ran and two of these crabs were on those 15 baits so I actually added 15 baits to two of my lines just kind of make them fit a little bit better and you know that's kind of stuff I like to do in this spot just kind of make adjustments you know so much better i'll go ahead and film this next one this next one should be like 14 crabs or something all right so last time on this one i got 10. i like to see 14 this time sun's hitting the water saw the tide moving around my other buoys one of my other buoys where I can see it good. Oh yeah. Going for 14, that's two. Three. Four. Five, I missed six. Miss another one. <laughs> Seven. They'll come back. Halfway there, more than half the line left. And I missed two. Eight, nine, ten. Four more. 
11. Well, two more. Come on, baby. I missed two, so if I'd have caught them, they will come back up. Actually, that one I grazed dipping at 13, 14. Would have been 16. There's 15, 16, 17. Eighteen. Nineteen. Missed him. He'll come back. Twenty. Twenty one. Alright, 21. <clears throat> Would have been two dozen, but I missed like three. I mean, that's a good quarter basket. Man, those are some pretty crabs. Alright, I just caught a dozen really nice ones on this short line. So I'm going to run back to that one where I caught the 21 on. Run it again, then run this one again. Just let those other two soak because they're not doing as good. Alright, it's about quarter to seven. And I'm getting ready to go ahead and top off my first basket nice crabs here mm. she's a little bit full <laughs> Good problems. All right, and they're nice and hard, so they the crabs, so they cling to each other really freaking good. All right, and there's the start of my second, and then there's my jump. So not too bad so far. Go ahead and film this run. It should be pretty good. My shadows got me a little bit. It always does early. The first uh, few hours on this lay.
I can see the shadow making them drop off. Might have to go ahead and run it the other way. Yep, shadow's screwing me. Some people are like, that shadow don't do nothing. I mean, if you just watch this video, you, know, <laughs> you can see it. I know it does. I've been seeing it do it my whole life, you know? <laughs> like, it's in their DNA to, you know, they get a shadow over top of them. It means there's a skate getting ready to try to get them or a rockfish or a black drum or a freaking blue cat or snakehead or something. The crab sees danger, it's in their DNA, or sees a shadow, it's in their DNA to get the heck out of there. earlier when I was running it it was a little bit more cloud cover so when they started coming to the surface they were already in shadow so it didn't mess them up I was had to run this the other way or something so when I laid all my lines out, the tide was slack. It was not moving. So when I laid them out, they went pretty much straight down on the bottom, okay? So then I started running my lines and the tide started coming in. And when the tide comes in, what it'll do is as you run your lines, it'll slowly bring your lines into more shallow water towards the shore as you're running them. Because when you put your when your line goes back in the water, when you're running it, that's just the way it goes. It goes towards shore. So, you know, a lot of people don't understand that. And, and it'll make your, your lines a lot tighter. Like, you know, like all my lines are significantly tighter now than when I laid them, not only because the tide's coming in and it's bringing my buoys up, which in turn tightens my lines, it's also, bringing them closer to shore as the tide comes in and keeping them pushed into shore so that makes them tighter as well so just you know a lot of people don't comprehend all that I mean that's just the tip of the iceberg with this stuff all right so I laid this one around the point up there so I can't run it the other way or else I'll run aground so I made a couple of adjustments 
move some barrels and stuff so the shadow is not quite as bad. Hopefully it'll be enough. <clears throat> see? I'll slow that down later so you can see that shadow hit that crab and he dropped right off. So I'm like way up in my bow trying to fight that shadow. Next round, it won't affect me. And if the crab's coming up the line a certain way so that that shadow does not hit its field of vision, he'll stay on there and I can dip him. But if they're coming up a certain way and they see that shadow, they're gone. But the shadow's not as bad this time. And last time I only caught three on this one. I already got four in there now. I've had people, I've been crabbing for 50 years and that shadow don't do nothing. All right, buddy. <laughs> you just keep on crabbing with that shadow over your line. People are a trip, man. I'll tell you. And this end, the shadow will be the worst because it's where I go around that point. So the line kind of goes a different direction than it does at the beginning. Just makes the shadow a little closer to the line. But next, next run on this line will be all right. I just get a couple sometimes that are messed up. Much better, less shadow, more than double that time than last time. Next time will be even better as long as the crabs keep up. This is gonna be my third time running this line with the shadow messing me up. The first time when it was really messing me up, caught three crabs on it. Second time, where it wasn't quite as bad, caught seven crabs on it. And this time, it should be a little bit better. 
than last time. And we'll see if I can't catch more than seven crabs on it. And I've got this extension on my stick. Right here. So that when I've got a stupid situation like this, I can grab it right here. And go way up forward. And since I run my lines a little bit tight, I can slow it down a little bit and dip them before they hit that shadow. That's the theory behind it anyway. Got seven already. Here comes eight. Yep. And now, even though, I mean, as you can see, the shadow's not going right over the line, but it is still going into the water. So they can still see that wall of blackness if they're, you know, not feeding quite right or something. If the shadow's just close to where your line's coming up out of the water, it can mess them up too, depending on how they're feeding. That shadow is bad news. So yeah, a little bit better that time. Three to seven to like nine or 10. 
All right, so I'm getting ready to go ahead and top off this second bushel here. It is just a little bit after 10 o'clock and I got two and a half all together. Uh, very nice full bushels. So I'm gonna have to, I don't know, figure out how to get these couple extras into these ones. But thanks for watching. Don't forget to like, comment, share, and subscribe.